Welcome to Hot Hero Sandwich with Eric Estrada, Richard Pryor, Gloria Steinem, and Cheryl Teagues. In conversation with Tom Cottle. I think that sometimes I used to pretend to be a child. And I think that's, a, I, I see kids doing it all the time. How would you do that? How well, you, you actually understand very well what's going on. But you know that you can get away with pretending not to understand what's going on because you're a child. So, <laughs> so you do. I mean, I think that young people are very smart. No matter what the circumstance is, I mean, as hard as it is, you get all the information. And you get it by the time you're nine, you know it. You know what ain't is. You, know, you don't know exactly, but you know there's something sex. Some ah, oh, I scare them with sex. Hmm, if I say sex to them, they'll go, huh? They'll avoid me. I know how to get them to leave me alone by asking them something honest. Now, when you were young and your body began to change, you're becoming a woman now, was there anybody that you could talk to or discuss these matters with about this body change? No, absolutely. I mean, we were certainly getting no education. What we learned, we learned from each other, and poorly, <laughs> and self-consciously. One of the uh, commercial uh, sanitary napkin companies put out a little booklet that told you about menstruation. I think that was the only sane source of... Uh, of information that I remember, although my mother would tell me things but sentimentalize them. I mean, her, you know, she would say, now this means you could have a baby if you want to. Period. Right? That's it. I mean, that's the end of explanation. And I can remember being absolutely convinced for a long time, for an extraordinarily long time, in my religious years, that there must be a God or some other force because otherwise, how did why did people who were married have babies and people who were not married not? Now, I mean, that's pretty primitive, right? That went on for a long time. I remember one time I was, uh, uh, well, J.D. and I were sort of lying on the couch <laughs> a bit, and my father walked into the room. And uh, I don't know if that's happened to many people, but uh, I just sort of dashed up and button myself together and because uh, we were only what you know i was only 16 something like that and i'm sure my father was shocked and he just left jd left and then i i saw my father and my father never really said anything and then the next day he said look you know you just have to be careful and then we had a really nice talk about it so it was such a nice way to handle it instead of saying you know how dare you do that and you're uh, you know you know you're a bad girl or whatever he never said that in my day mainly over sexual matters, girls could really be bad mouth. Do those experiences hit you, the bad reputation kind of thing? Oh, it definitely happened in my school. Um, it still is happening today, I'm sure. Uh, but I think you just had to be very discreet and find a boyfriend, or s I suppose they went home and told their own stories about what happened, but uh, you just had to be careful about who you were with. I know I look a certain way. <laughs> Love them and leave them tight. All right? You know what I'm saying? I know I look like that. So a lot of women back off. But I like the ones that say, Whoa, are you cute. <clears throat> Hot Hero Sandwich. Oh, we'll return after these messages. I think when, when you're growing up, you want to be like everybody else. And when, when you're not like everybody else, uh, I, I felt awkward about it. Now, today, that seems stupid because who wants to be like everybody else, <laughs> you know? Did you ever have those feelings of, I don't belong here, or I'm on the outside looking mm -hmm. in now? Did you have those feelings? Well, I did, but not unhappily. I think lots of kids feel uh, very rejected by their classmates. I didn't feel rejected because I felt I could survive. I mean, I felt, I feel like I've always been a survivor. I know what I have to do to survive. And I could be accepted by my classmates and have fun, and it was okay. I always felt that I was going to do something a little different, though. And I knew that I had crazy habits like reading tons of books, which nobody, everybody else thought was completely crazy. 
um, and um, it was only after I got to college that I discovered certain things. Um, I remember discovering very consciously moods when I was in college and I came down one morning and saw a girl sitting at the uh, breakfast table looking terrible. And I said, what's wrong? And she said, nothing's wrong, I'm just depressed. And I thought, that's really fantastic. You know, you can have a mood without a reason. So I immediately began having moods. It was wonderful. How did you see yourself at age 13, 14, 15? I thought, I think I was invisible. You thought yourself was invisible? <clears throat> I don't think anyone saw me or cared. I thought I was just... Like I said, I had a space, and my mind was to the things that I imagined for the people I was around, and they couldn't comprehend it. They didn't think it was realistic. I, think that I was considered just... You know, Richard is... Little... You know what I'm saying? It wasn't nothing. I was all right for fun. I mean, if you wanted to laugh, you'd come around him. Never asked him nothing serious. You know? He was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Hot Hero Sandwich will return after these messages. Were there experiences when you were young where you felt the real assault of racism? I felt hurt about people calling me a, a nigger. Do you know? <clears throat> and I didn't quite understand, get to the whole comprehension of what that was supposed to mean because I never felt like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, that, I just was the, it started getting those insults later in your life, you know, or the assumption of the insult when your parents would say, well, you don't want to go down there's white people there and stuff like that. So I'd just take it like that. You know? It's all easy to dislike people in this country. It really is. All these to dislike someone because of their color, or because of their sex, or because of their job, or because of where they live, or, you know, all of little things like that. It's easy to do. I mean, it's out there for you to do that. But to buy that, to not do that is really, you'd be lucky, I think. A good thing that, that happened to me inadvertently was that uh, I met a, uh, a black girl who was at ballet class, too, who was much more, uh, much better educated, much better off economically than I was. And, and that was very good, it was very healthy, because it made me understand that blackness wasn't the same as poverty or, you know, which was what the, the whole neighborhood believed, or as lack of education or something. And this, I'm, I'm grateful to that girl because she, she was kind to me. And we were friends, and it helped me to realize that race is essentially meaningless except for what society gives it. We now return to Hot Hero Sandwich. Clothes were important to you, or are important to you. Were they something that you thought about when you were young? Yeah. How you looked? I'll give you one example. <clears throat> there was a pair of shoes in the window that I wanted. And mine already had a hole in them. And my mother couldn't afford to get them. I'd wait till we add up the, added up the bread to get those shoes. I wouldn't get another pair of shoes. But you know, I'd hang in there and wait till I can get the ones I wanted. Well, I think what I did was, uh, in clothes, was when I bought something, I would think about how other people would like it or what they would think of it. Uh, and and um, I just think at this point now, uh, I'm just getting away from that. <laughs> I think uh, even during modeling, I would look up to people that I admired and just try to buy clothes that uh, would be like, uh, that they would like, instead of thinking about what I would like. Did you see your parents hugging, embracing? Would they be affectionate in front of the children? Oh, yes. They, uh, maybe, when I was growing up uh, and in that confused period uh, of being a teenager, uh, I would see them so happy. They'd come home at night and we'd ha all have dinner together and then 
they'd read the paper or read a book or just be very happy uh, together. They were always holding hands, kissing, even today. And I'd think, oh, their life seems so happy. Will mine ever be like that? How did you feel about your mother when you were small? Idolize her, worship her, have a close relationship? You, you, such oh, a close no, friendship no. with I your dad. I worried about her. You worried about I her? I worried about her. She was, she seemed to me to need taken care of and to be a kind of victim. I mean, I used to have dreams about uh, uh, people taunting her or chasing her or, I, d I don't know, it was just a general feeling that I really, I wanted to take care of her and I was worried about her. I think our roles were reversed probably fairly young. That is, uh, I felt like the parent. Uh, but that was partly because she, she was um, not always so well physically and feeling a bit sad. So it just, it just happened that way. I could spot a junkie four blocks away. And I can tell you if he just took a hit or if he needs one the age of nine. It was like this, I got through all that. Um, I didn't have a childhood, I don't think. I went from nine to 21 real quick. I had to. Nine being the time that your grandfather died. I had to grow up alone, you know. I mean, I just had to. I had to go from 9 to 21, and I don't know how I did it. I mean, there is no reason for me to be here other than that I know that I was blessed and all this that's happened to me was for a reason. And now I have to decide what I will do with it. I always thought that after all this that happened to me, where I am now, so I wouldn't change any of it. And I've heard people say that, but I never knew what they meant. I really wouldn't want to come back as anybody else or change my life. You know, I'd, and I'd go through it all, but I always feel I owe something to somebody somewhere, and I don't know what to do, you know? And then one day I will be walking down the street, and God will step in front of me and go, Richard, it is time. And I go, yes, master. <laughs> what? I want you to go on television tonight and blah, 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 blah. You know, but I don't know what it is I'm supposed to do. I wouldn't change my childhood, I don't think, because it... It, um, it gives me uh, strength. I think it taught me how to deal with conflict. I'm not still very good at it. Hot Hero Sandwich. We'll be back after these messages. <laughs>